Please welcome your host, Dion Taylor. Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. So last week I received an email from somebody that asked me if it was possible to create a view that only shows accounts that have not had any activities logged against them in the past 30 days. Now, out of the box, unfortunately, we cannot do that, but there is a, an amazing tool that was created by Jonas Rapp and it is called the Fetch XML Builder and it's part of the XRM toolbox. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So here is that account view that only shows accounts that have not had any activities in the past 30 days. So that includes accounts that have no activities associated with it at all. So let me show you that. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new account and I'm just gonna call it new account. And then you can see that it doesn't have any activities to it, right? Because I just created it. But I'm gonna save and close it so that you can see that it will actually, here you go, new account. It actually shows up under the no activities in the past 30 days. Now, if I actually go and open that account and then associate an activity with it, let's just go ahead and do a task. And let's just do a subject, follow up. I'm gonna go ahead and save and close that. Right, so we now we have an activity associated with it, right, in the past 30 days. And as you can see now, it's no longer here. So this is working correctly. Now, if I go back here to activities, and let me go ahead and go to the view that I created. So here you can see all of the activities. This is a task that I just created. And here you can see some older activities as well. And then these are those accounts that they're related to. Now, we couldn't really create a view like this by using the out of the box features, right? So if I would go in and create my view in the new advanced find or in the old advanced find, I was never really able to create a view like this because if I did, if I did like, hey, show me all of the activities related to an account or a different record, right? Where we're filtering to say last, let's just go ahead and say last 30 days. And then I would hit apply. It would not show me the accounts that did not have activities, right? So that's the problem right there. So let me show you, if I go back here to my accounts and my no activities in the past 30 days, right? Let me show you what this looks like after you create this view by using Fetch XML Builder in the XRM toolbox. You can go actually to, because you need to go to the legacy. Here we go. Let me just go ahead and show you the legacy advanced fund. You can do that by going to Power Platform Environment Settings and then just clicking on the icon for advanced find over here. So here we are, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to go to accounts and then I'm going to that view that I just showed you. Look at that. So we have here, obviously we only wanna show active accounts that either does not have activities or that has activities that were created not in the last 30 days, right? So that's kind of what we're doing over here. Now, you will notice if I would create a view like this from scratch and I set the regarding field, right? The activities are regarding the accounts to does not contain data. I cannot have any conditions below here, right? Let me show you that. Let me just create a new view. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go here to query or I can just click here. That's probably better. I'm going to do a new view and then I'm going to say activities regarding let's scroll all the way down activities regarding and i'm going to say does not contain data right and i can now not enter any conditions underneath even if i would say contains contains data and then i said date created last right like we saw earlier or is it last 30 days i'm going to do that and then i'm going to change this to does not contain data guess what it's going to wipe that out okay so again out of the box we cannot do this so now let me show you 
how we can use that using the fetch XML builder tool. Now, there's a little bit of setup you have to do first. So let me go ahead and show you that. So I'm going to navigate to, here we go, make.powerapps.com because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create two views in Dynamics 365 and I'm going to use as few columns as possible. So you can do this obviously from within a solution that would, that's normally what you would do, right? I'm just going to go ahead and go straight to the table. I'm going to go to the account table. I'm going to go to views and I'm going to create a new view. You can see here that I've already created them, but it doesn't matter. We're going to do it again. I'm going to click on new view. So I'm going to say new view one. I don't want AI generated columns. I'm going to click here on create. And we only have the account name column and that is totally fine with me. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some filters to it. So obviously we want to have accounts that have a status of active, right? I don't care about inactive accounts. And then I also want to add the related table, right? The activity table. And that's going to be all the way. That's a relationship that is a one to many. Cause if you start at the, at the top here, you can see here many to one, the relationship I'm looking for is a one to many. One account can have many activities, right? So we're going to go here to one to many, and then we're going to look for activities, not activity party activity regarding that's what I'm looking for. And then I'm going to say, create it on date, create it. I keep forgetting that. And then we're going to say last X days and it's going to be 30. And I know I said earlier, yes, this is not going to work, <laughs> right? If we create this, but what I want to do here is I want to use these views so I can kind of take a look to see what that fetch XML looks like, right? So I'm going to go ahead and save this guy and then I'm going to create another one. Here we go. And I can use the view that I just created as a template for that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the filters, right? Because I'm going to create a second view. And I'm going to say does not contain data. And again, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to understand what that fetch XML looks like. So I'm going to save this as my second view. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Okay. Now I'm going to go back and now I'm going to publish the whole table. All right. That looks good. I'm not sure what happens with my, Oh, here we are. New view one, new view two. There they are. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the fetch XML builder application in XRM toolbox. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. You can see here that I've actually opened it a lot of different times, right? Because that's where it's going to show, show up on their recently used tools. Now, the first thing that you will normally do is you would actually connect to an environment. Now I already have my connection saved, but let me just go ahead and click on this so I can kind of show you what that looks like. You would click here on new connection, right? And then you're going to pick the Microsoft login control. We're going to use the default configuration and we're going to open a Microsoft login control. So this is going to be Office 365. And then if you have multiple organizations, you want to display that list, right? You're going to click on login. And then you're just going to go ahead and sign in like you normally would do, right? So I'm going to go ahead and sign in here. I'm going to put my password in here. I'm going to sign in. And it's asking me to approve my sign in. So let me just go ahead and do that as well. 
So right now I would go in here and I would go ahead and pick the organization I want. And that's when it then shows up in that list of connections, right, that you saw earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this and cancel all of that. Now, again, once you are connected, you can go ahead and open the fetch XML builder. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open the one of the views that I just created. So I'm going to click here on open view. Let's give it a second here. And here you can see the view selector. So I can select a table from here, which right, we want to do the account table. And then I can select one of the views that I just created. So here's my new view one. And this is that underlying fetch XML code. So I'm going to click on OK. And that is now loading that code here in my fetch XML window. And here you can also kind of see, right, these are the columns, name, account ID. And then it also has a filter here, right? State code equals zero, so only active accounts. And then it's related to the activity pointer, right? The activity pointer, we are also, we're calling that for short AA right now, right? You can see that activity pointer alias AA, and it's linking it, it's an inner link using the regarding object ID to the account table. And then we have your created on operator last X days. So what I want to do with this is I want to copy this code, this fetch XML code, and I'm going to use Visual Studio Code here to kind of play around with that a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Obviously, you can also use like Notepad or something like that. I just really like Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a new file. And this is a text file. And then I don't have to do anything with this, right? I'm just going to go ahead. Oops. I'm just going to go ahead and paste my fetch XML in here. There you go. This is my first tab. So what you could do is you could put some comments in there saying, you know, this is my first. Let's just go ahead and hit enter. And then this is the first view. You just got to make sure at the end that you're not copying this over. All right. So I'm also going to already open a new text file. This is going to be my second view. Oops. So now let's go back to uh, the XR XML toolbar, uh, sorry, toolbox. <laughs> and now let's go ahead and open again the view. But now we want to do new view two. Let's go ahead and do that. Oops. New view two. I'm going to say OK. And that looks a little bit different. So again, I'm going to grab all that. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back to Visual Studio. Here we go. And I'm going to paste it in here. All right. So that looks good. Now, they look a little bit different, right? So if you look at here, let's make sure, first of all, that our aliases are the same. This one says alias right over here. That looks good. That's AA. And then here it is AA as well. Alias is AA and entity name is AA. A lot of times when you set this up and it's probably that it stayed the same, the alias, that AA, right? Because you're really saying, hey, the activity, I'm going to call the, the activity table, I'm going to call that AA now. But because I used my first view to create my second view, right? They're, they're, they have the same alias. That's what I think what happened. Right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy everything from the second view from filter to fetch. So line eight to 14. That's what I'm doing. And again, I have a line eight because I have this second view comment here on top, right? If you don't have that, it's going to be line seven to 13. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this again. I'm going to highlight all of this. And I'm going to copy this. Then I'm going to go back to my first view over here. And the first change I'm going to make is the link type. If I look here at my second view, that's actually 
you can, you can see that the link type is outer. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to outer. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to delete everything from line 12 down. So again, if you don't have your comments here, then it's going to be from line 11 down. But where it says here, fetch, filter, filter, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to paste what I just copied over from my second view. So I'm going to go ahead and in line 12, I'm going to put the cursor over here. I'm going to paste that, right? So now I have that bottom part from the second view and I just copy that in here. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to remove all of this stuff over here, right? This extra space here. I want to keep this little, I don't even know what this is called. This is a uh, larger than sign, greater than sign. I'm going to keep that and I'm going to delete all of this stuff that I have highlighted here, right? So I'm going to hit delete. So now you can see link entity. The only thing that we need to add here, as you can see, is a slash. So it looks like this. So now you have smaller than this little slash link entity and then the greater than sign, right? So this is what it should look like. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the whole thing except for this comment. Do not copy this comment. If you think it's easier maybe to delete the comment first, you can do that as well. And then you can just grab the whole thing. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And now I'm going to go back to the fetch XML builder. Okay, let's go in there. So I'm going to delete what is in here and I'm going to copy that code that I just copied over from Visual Studio Code. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to now save this into Dynamics 365, into Dataverse as a new view. So I'm going to save the view as, I'm going to call this my new view accounts with no activity 30 days, right? Very long, but doesn't matter. I'm going to say, okay. And this is now going to save this back into my environment as a personal view. Keep that in mind. All right. Moment of truth. Let's go back to Dynamics V65 here. Let's go back here to the sales hub. So we can go ahead and I've, I wanted to make sure that the view is there first. And let's just go back to accounts. And here it is, my view, my new view accounts with no activity 30 days. Now, obviously you can take a look at this and see if this all makes sense. But what I really, what you really should do is go back to that legacy advanced find and check it there. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go back to my advanced find. I'm going to actually refresh this screen because otherwise you will not see that new view that you just created. Let's give it a second here. Here we are. Accounts. And oh, it's going to be under my views. Here we go. And as you can see, now you have that additional line below it here. Now, obviously you can also you can do this as well with other things, right? I have some other views here as well, where I'm saying there have been no orders in the past three days, right? So here you can see we're looking at an order status, right? Not, it does not equal canceled. And again, right? So you can add other columns to filter on here as well. I think I have another one here that actually says no no sales activity in the last 30 days. So this one is looking at only the activity types of appointment, email, phone call, task, opportunity, close, order, close, campaign response, right? So you can do things like that, obviously, uh, as well. So what do you guys think? Pretty cool stuff, right? Great, great tool by Jonas. So Jonas, thank you so much for sharing that with the community. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Thanks for watching. Until next time.